here in this session we are discussing about android architecture this android architecture is also known as android software stack android operating system is a stack of software components which is roughly divided into six session and five main layers so here in this diagram there are six sections are there and five main layers are there so this is the architecture diagram or android software stack so starting from the bottom the first layer that is the linux kernel then comes hardware abstraction layer then native c or cpp or c++ libraries android runtime that is in a single layer both the android runtime and libraries are in a single layer java api framework then system applications layer so these are the different layers in android architecture so we will see each and every single layers first one is the linux kernel so linux kernel that is a foundation of android platform for example the android runtime that relies on linux kernel for underlying functionality such as threading and low level memory management Using a Linux kernel that allows Android to take advantage of key security features and allow device manufacturers to develop hardware drivers for a well-known kernel. For example, in the older system, suppose we are create, uh, in a laptop or desktop, we are installing a mouse. It will not work immediately. Suppose you are using Windows XP, a particular driver software will be coming with that particular mouse and that software should be installed in your system and we need to reboot the system for the mouse to be in a working model now almost all the operating systems are just like a plug and play type suppose you are clicking or connecting a particular mouse it is ready to work that mouse is able to communicate with the system so the driver software is preloaded we are just enabling that particular driver software when plugging in a mouse to the usb port so using linux kernel that allows android to take advantage of key security features and allows device manufacturers to develop hardware drivers for a well known kernel the second layer is hardware abstraction layer or hal the hardware abstraction layer that provides standard interfaces that expose device hardware capabilities to the higher level java api framework the hardware abstraction layer consists of multiple library modules each of which implement an interface for a specific type of hardware component such as the camera or bluetooth etc when a framework api makes a call to access device hardware the android system loads a library module for that hardware component for example you are clicking on your wifi button to enable it the corresponding hardware device will be there in your mobile phone the corresponding library modules and hardware component the mapping mapping is that done at that particular time and the support is provided by hardware abstraction layer all the functionalities with respect to the library files or library module or programs that particular hardware is getting the next layer, uh, layer is android runtime for devices running android version 5 that is api level 21 or higher each application runs in its own process and with its own instance of the android runtime here to your android runtime is written to run multiple virtual machines on low memory devices by executing dex files a bytecode format designed specifically for uh, for android is known as dex files so similar to uh, java virtual machine is having dot class file for execution the same way android operating system or android virtual machine is there so that particular component or virtual machine is having a bytecode format known as dex file or dot dex that is extension for that particular bytecode format for android and that's optimized for minimal memory footprint 
that is uh, suppose uh, your device your mobile phone is having a minimum memory capacity of about 2 GB RAM and 8 GB ROM okay such devices are there so a resource constrained device is with us so the DEX file is optimized for such devices that is the meaning of Android that optimized for minimal memory footprint build tools such as D8 compile Java sources into DEX bytecode which can run on the Android platform so build tools such as DEX D8 for example we are creating our, our application just like main activity dot Java first it will be converted into a class file so then a translation is performed the compile Java source into DEX bytecode for that a translation from class file to DEX bytecode is performed there so such a tool is known as D8 so there is a translation before executing in Android operating system some of the major features of Android runtime include the following ahead of time and just in time compilation optimized garbage collection on Android 9 that is API level 28 and higher conversion of an app package is Dalvik executable format DEX means Dalvik executable format to more compact machine code better debugging support including a dedicated sampling profiler detailed diagnostic ex exceptions and crash reporting and the ability to set watch points to monitor specific fields all these are some of the features of Android runtime and one important thing prior to Android version 5 that is API level 21 Dalvik was the Android runtime Dalvik or Dalvik virtual machine was there if your application runs well on Android runtime then it should work on Dalvik as well but the reverse may not be true and the next layer is native C or CPP library many core Android system components and services such as ART that is Android runtime and HAL hardware abstraction layer are built from native code that require native libraries written in C and CPP the Android platform provides Java framework APIs to expose the functionality of some of these native libraries to applications one example just like you can access OpenGL OpenGL is for graphics and animation OpenGL ES through the Android frame frameworks Java OpenGL API to add support for drawing and manipulating 2D and 3D graphics in your application if you are developing an application that requires C or CPP code you can use the Android NDK or native development kit to access some of these native platform libraries directly from your native code so that is the advantages of using libraries C and CPP libraries then the next layer is system applications system apps layer Android comes with a set of core app applications for email SMS messaging calendar internet browsing or browsers are there contact informations and many more applications included with the platform have no special status among the apps the user chooses to install so the third party application can become the user's default web browser SMS messenger or even the default keyboard in some or many cases the system apps function both as applications for user and to provide key capabilities that developers can access from their own application for example if your application would like to deliver an SMS message you don't need to build that functionality on your own you can instead invoke whichever SMS application is already installed to deliver a message to the recipient you specify and the next layer is Java API framework the entire feature of the Android op operating system is available to you through APIs application programming interface written in the la Java language so all APIs are written in Java language these APIs form the building blocks you need to create Android applications by simplifying 
the reuse of code modular system components and services which include the following a rich and extensible view system that you can use to build an applications user interface including list grid text boxes buttons and even an embed embeddable web browser a resource manager that providing access to non code resources such as localized strings graphics and layouts a notification manager that enables all applications to display custom alerts in the status bar just like suppose you are receiving a an sms that will be notified at the notification bar or status bar an activity manager that manages the life cycle of applications and provides a common navigation back stack content providers that enable applications to access the data from other applications such as the contact application or to share their own data for example suppose you are using amazon pay for top up your mobile number so the contact information is available along with that process there is a particular tab or a widget for accessing contact information so this is inter communication between two different applications from amazon pay account or pay application you can able to use your contact application for adding a particular number for recharge or top up developers have full access to the same framework apis that android system apps use